Hi, everybody. Thanks for listening. I'm back. I'm Jenny. I'm a life coach. And today I'm talking about why INFJs need to travel. Um, travel is really kind of overwhelming for us. I mean, because we're introverts. Um, but I also think it's really important. Um, I kind of think travel can be sort of like a modern vision quest. And here's what I mean by that. Traveling shows us things about ourselves that we didn't know before. Um, and more often than not, we come back as different people. Um, we might not be like drastically different people, but we might come back just grateful to be home. Um, we might start appreciating things that we didn't have when we were traveling. Um, you know, we might just come back like knowing that we like a new food. Um, so it can be big changes or small changes, but I do think travel changes people. Um, when COVID started, so I was traveling full time um, when COVID started and and COVID really made me think a lot about um, what really is it about travel that's so magical? Like if you could just take the magical things about travel and put them in a bottle, what are the what are those ingredients? Um, and so I thought about that a lot. And one of the things that I think travel does um, is it's very empowering for us to go outside of our comfort zones. Um, we are very introverted. We like our comfort zones. And um, when we're traveling, we're really choosing to leave those comfort zones. And I think that can actually be really um, empowering. And I think it can help us build a lot of confidence. I think it's very confidence building. Uh, it also forces us to be vulnerable. It forces us to ask for help. Um, a lot of us, I think, have had our boundaries violated. We have spent a lot of time being misunderstood. And so we kind of just go into avoidance mode. We try to avoid all of those things. We try to avoid getting triggered. Um, but when we're traveling, we're forced to be vulnerable. And we're forced to ask people for help. Um, but connecting with people from a place of vulnerability actually builds really genuine connections and we love connecting deeply with people and so by being forced to be vulnerable it is facilitating those deep connections that we like to make with people so much people really respond to vulnerability and and I think it goes both ways if you see a traveler and they're like asking for directions um I think it triggers something it triggers empathy in people to see someone who who needs help um who needs help and who needs directions and who you know doesn't have a support system with them um who's completely out of their element that triggers a lot of empathy in people and a desire to help and so it's it's a really um it's really fertile ground. Vulnerability is really fertile ground for building deep, genuine connections with people. Um, it forces us to surrender to discomfort and uncertainty. INFJs, we're always trying to predict the future. We like things to be very predictable. Um, but traveling, there's a lot of unpredictability with that. You might miss a flight. You might have trouble finding your taxi. Um, you might be trying to find your way into your Airbnb late at night. So there's a lot of things that you can't plan for. Um, it forces you to surrender to discomfort and uncertainty. And that's something that INFJs have a really hard time with is surrendering control. Um, but it's also kind of, um, it's also kind of like an adrenaline rush for us when we finally are forced to do that. Um, it really is kind of like an adren adrenaline rush to just surrender. It also jars us into presence. We're in our heads all of the time. Um, and it's a lot easier for us to be in our heads when we are seeing the same neighbors walking by every day. 
we're hearing the same sounds, we're smelling the same smells, then we stop paying attention to them over time. But when you're traveling, all the sounds are new, all the smells are new, all the buildings are new. And that newness jars us into presence. Instead of worrying about the future, instead of thinking about the past, we're paying attention to all these new sights and sounds, and it's forcing us to be present, um, which ideally is where you always want to be living. Um, if you're thinking about just like happy, healthy mental states, there's more room for serendipity to happen. There's more room for synchronicity to happen. We love when, um, we love when like these little moments of serendipity happen. Um, we like, we really love and cherish those moments and it's very rare for them to happen when we're stuck in the same daily patterns all the time. Um, when we're not leaving our houses, when we're just being hermits and not leaving our houses. And so once we are forced out of our homes, now there is room for the universe to work and to send us people we're supposed to meet um, or challenges we're supposed to face. So it's kind of forces us out of hiding into um, making new connections, learning new things, having new experiences that are ultimately going to enrich our lives. Um, also, INFJs are all about the vibes, all about the vibes. And different locations have vibes. Um, like if you're like looking for a new apartment and you're like, the apartment might look fine and you might not really be able to explain why the vibes are off, but some apartments might just feel really good to you and some apartments might just feel really bad. Um, and you might not be able to explain why. And so um, different locations have different energy signatures. And they might not even be bad or good energy signatures. They might just be different. And I think it helps to kind of step into different energy fields, especially when we've been really stuck. When we've been re really stuck in a low energy for a long time, um, travel can kind of move us out of those stuck energy fields into something new. Um, stepping into the energy of the future is also a big thing. Like if your dream is to be like a California surfer, but you have no idea how you're going to make it happen. Sometimes you just need to hack the energy. Maybe you can't live as a California surfer now. But maybe you can go to a beach. Maybe you can travel somewhere where you can take a surf lesson. Maybe you can go do a surf camp for a week. And sometimes just taking that step, getting a closer to that goal energetically, just one step closer to that goal energetically will help you see the next step to that goal. It's like there's a fog and you know where you want the final step to be but you can't see the steps in between until you take the first one. So if you take that first energetic step, then you can kind of see through the fog to the second step and keep going from there. So sometimes it's an easy way to kind of um, hack, hack into the future energy of where you want to be living. I hope that makes sense. We're also really hypersensitive especially to things like weather. I know a lot of um, INFJs and INFPs have a really hard time with like seasonal depression. Um, I am included in that. My energy levels just die in the winter. Um, and it's really, really tied to the leaves on the trees. If there's green leaves on the trees, I'm like 50% happier automatically than the rest of the year. Um, so, so traveling can also help you increase your energy levels, especially if you're a very weather sensitive person. If you live somewhere cloudy, maybe you want to travel somewhere sunny. 
um, to replenish your energy. If you live somewhere cold, maybe you want to travel somewhere warm to replenish your energy. I am not a cold weather person, but I know some people love the cold and maybe for you going to find snow would make you happy. Um, but it really is just about um, if you're drained and you just need to recharge your battery, sometimes traveling um, is a much more doesn't I mean it doesn't sound traveling sounds like a lot of work to recharge your batteries but I do feel like sometimes that's what we need especially if you've tried everything else um when we travel we get downloads we get inspiration we're getting inspiration from the world around us but we're also just kind of getting downloads you know like when you're in the shower or when you're driving and thoughts just come to you that also happens when you're traveling. And the reason is, is because just because you're not trying to think through problems, you're just yeah. relaxed. And when you're relaxed, that's when the downloads come, ironically. Um, it gets us out of overthinking mode. When you're paying attention to other things, when you're distracted, sometimes that's when our best um, hits of inspiration happen. And so travel is a really great way to keep yourself distracted from overthinking. Um, and again, you're getting inspired by the fabrics, you're getting inspired by the food. Um, these, Anything new is a great place to get ideas from. Um, it also forces us to socialize. We don't really like to socialize very much, but it's also good for us. Um, you can notice a lot of this is about getting out of our comfort zones. It forces us to socialize. Um, I think one of my most impactful trips was uh, when I went to Florida. I was just on Airbnb and I was just like, I need to get out of here. And um, I just went on Airbnb and I looked for the cheapest place I could find. And it was just happened to be this house in Florida that was set up like a hostel. And I just went, um, it, I just went and it was like this room full of bunk beds and it was like all guys. There was maybe one other girl, um, but there was a casino nearby. And so most of the guys were just like there to play poker at this casino. Um, but it ended up being a really fun group of people. Like, so entertaining so different um really dark humor <laughs> and um you know we we ended up doing things like we would go on fishing trips and then we would cook the fish and all eat dinner together um which is not something i would have ever volunteered to do but it ended up being a really fun time and i actually ended up staying for months and then i ended up going back other winters and staying for months um, and I'm still friends with some of those people. So um, also hostile situations. There's so many interesting people in hostels. Um, it can be an overwhelming environment, but it's also like constant mental stimulation too, which is something that we really love. So I don't think it's a good... Um, I don't think it's a good strategy all the time. But sometimes I think hostels can be um, really enriching experiences. And of course, it depends on the hostel. But a lot of them have private rooms. You can get private rooms in a hostel. And then you can kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, there's also co-living situations, which is more like digital nomad people. Um they're probably a little bit less like salt of the earth types um, in the co-living places, but there's lots of ways to do um, like community housing. And I think you're at least definitely gonna get some interesting stories. <laughs> and INFJs love interesting stories. So um, it might be stressful and weird, but you'll at least get some interesting stories out of it, um, out of those co-living situations. Um, it also forces us to use our extroverted sensing, right? INFJs, we have our four primary functions. The bottom one 
is extroverted sensing, which is just basically like using your senses and acting in the moment. Um, and so travel is so sensory and you're just acting in the moment all the time. And so it's, um, it is still one of our four functions so it's still in our function stack, but it's the bottom one. So in in one way, um, it is in our skill set, but it's also our least used skill. So we get a lot of practice using um, our least used skill. So in that way, um, there's something about flow states. I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but. I'm going to circle back around. So there's something about flow states where to get in a flow state, you have to be in this happy in-between between challenging yourself um, and, and having some skill in that area. And so I think extroverted sensing kind of lives in that place where, where it is a skill, but um, it's also challenging for us to use it. And if you know anything about flow states, you know, they feel amazing. Um, so it's, yeah, it's forcing us to use our extroverted sensing. Another thing about travel is travel is something that we do for ourselves. And we're always doing things for everyone else. We're always doing things for other people. Um, and travel really forces us to focus on ourselves more, especially if you're traveling alone. All your responsibilities are back at home, right? Your job is back at home. Maybe your like your bills, your pets, all of the stuff that you're responsible for, it's all back at home. And um, we're always doing things for everyone else. We really struggle in the self-care department, um, but when we're traveling, it gives us more separation from our responsibilities and we're more forced to focus on ourselves, which can be really helpful for us also. Um, and um, the I think the biggest reason that we don't travel, first of all, travel can be anything. I don't, I don't want you to listen to this and feel like I'm telling you you need to travel when you like don't have vacation time or like plane tickets are too expensive or any of those things. Um, travel can really be anything. Like travel could be walking down a new street. Travel could be um, just driving one town over to and like stopping and exploring it. Um, you know, it can be a road trip, it can be flying somewhere, it could be like renting a boat. Maybe like there's like an escape room in your town that you've just never tried. It can really just be um, anywhere new that you haven't been. It can be close. It can be trying something new that you haven't tried. Um, but I think one of the biggest reasons that we don't go on trips is because we're perfectionists and we over plan and we get really overwhelmed in the over planning stage of travel. Um, we like a lot of certainty. Certainty is very comforting to us. And so because we like that certainty, we get stuck in over planning. I think we also, and the perfectionism, I think we feel like if we're going to spend all the money to go to this place, then I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I want to make sure I do all the things. Um, and that takes a lot of the fun out of it. We get stuck in overthinking and sometimes it never happens. Sometimes we lose the motivation because we feel like we've already planned the whole trip in our head and then we're too burnt out to implement it. Um, sometimes it just becomes too much work and we stop planning and never go. Sometimes, um, Sometimes we just know it's going to be too much work to plan it, so we never even start. Um, so I think the biggest thing with traveling is just don't really plan. I think it helps for us to know like where we're going to sleep at night and maybe how we're going to get around. Um, but I would not really plan beyond that. Um, I like to... Um, if there's like points of interest that I already know about, 
I like to save them in a Google map. Google lets you make like a custom map where you can like pinpoint points of interest and save them. So if there's things I know I wanna see, I'll just put them all on a map, but I don't really plan an itinerary. Um, when I have free time, I'll just go in the map and I'll look, look at what's there and be like, oh, well, this is the closest place. I've got a couple hours, I can hit this spot. And then if I know I'm gonna have a free day tomorrow, I'll look at the map and be like, oh, well, this one's further away. Let me go hit that tomorrow. And there's a couple other ones nearby. So I'll hit them too. Um, that's kind of how I, I plan trips. And I used to do photography. So if I wanted to get really good pictures, I would go to the, um, the, um, what's it called? The tourism board's Instagram account. Um, and I would look through their pictures. And so if there are any pictures that I really wanted to get, then I would save those um, into my Google map. And then the last tip that I have is if you look up locations in Google maps, sometimes it shows you the busiest times. It shows you the busiest days of the week and then the busiest times of the day. And so um, for any introvert, I always um, mention that because then you can go in and just see when the least busy time, the least busy time is um, to go and see places. And um, I still think it's good to be vulnerable and I still think it's good to meet people. And I also think it's good to avoid crowds. <laughs> so um, Google Maps has that really useful feature. Um, I think it'd be really great if there were like travel guides for introverts. Um, but for now, um, Google can help with that a little bit. So that's everything I have. If any of this resonated with you or if you have anything you think I missed, um, I would love to hear from you in a comment or an email. And um, I will be back with another video soon. Thanks everybody, bye.